So we've had filter and sort functions for a while, but with the new functions, you can do a lot more with it. For example, you can keep the headers dynamic now. So if this changes to time, watch it change down here. And also you can choose which columns you want to return, which order you want to return them. And I'm going to go through how to do that in this video. We are going to combine it with some new functions. So we had sort and filter before, but we're going to combine it with choose columns, vstack, choose rows, etc. cetera. Um, and here, for example, if I want to, for example, add another one, then I can say I want the client like that, and then it will add it like this with all the same parameters. Before, you needed to copy and paste the column names, otherwise it really wouldn't work that well. And then without kind of co more complex functions, for example, index, you weren't able to choose the columns that you wanted. So my name is David, and I'm going to have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. So if you like this video, then just consider clicking the like button to show your appreciation. All right, let's get started. So here I'm in a brand new file, and what I'm first going to do is I'm going to list the column names. So here I'm in a blank file. The first thing I'm going to do is get a list of the column names. So I'm going to do equals transpose, so I get them vertically instead of horizontally, and then I'm going to do filter, and then all of these, and I can go as far as I want, whereby all of these again is not equal to blank, like that. And then I get all of my data showing up like this. Now I'm going to do a sequence that ends dynamically there, so equals sequence. And I'm going to say, for example, the number of rows is going to be count a, so count all of this data set. Notice that it ends in a hash symbol, which means it will grow dynamically. So I close my brackets once for count a, once for sequence, and I have it there. And just to prove it, if I have a new column name, it will go up here as well, and that will be number 10. So they are numbered now, and this is important for what we'll look at later on, which is the choose columns function. So what is interesting is that there is a specific order that you need to do in order to make this work well. Otherwise, your data will give you errors. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with uh, the base case, which is just filter, and then we'll add them bit by bit. So I'm going to do equals filter, and I'm going to do this whole data set, including the headers, whereby the name column is equal to David. That's me. These are all of the data points like this. And this is showing me all of the columns in the same order. Annoyingly, it doesn't give me the date format, so I do need to format them myself. And there's no way around that, even with a new method, sadly. But um, I don't have my column headers either, which isn't very good. We're also going to sort it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to add on sort. And I'm going to say here, sort by the third column. So this is the third column. So three, and I'm going to sort descending like this. And now I'm sorting them from highest to lowest. If I did it the other way around, it would be like that. Um, note that because this is a dynamic array, if I click on the other cells, it is showing me in gray. But, and if I have some text here, it will give me the spill error because it's trying to spill into this thing where I already have text. So I delete that and it goes away. You can only edit this, the formula in the top leftmost cell. So we're now going to keep adding things. And here's where we're going to get into two, the new things. So I'm going to take the headers and stack them on top of this. So to do that, you have this great new function called vstack. And vstack allows you to just list one thing on top of another one. So the simple way to do it is like this one. Just do it that way. And then next up, we're going to do the other one. And then close my brackets. Then I have the headers where I want them to be and everything else underneath. But I'm going to go a little bit more sophisticated because I'm just going to keep the same range for everything else to keep it simple. So in order to do that, I need to add something else. So instead of vstack there, I'm going to do it still based on this A1 to I13. And in order to do that, I'm going to say this function called take. And take, just you do the arrays, and then how many rows do you want to take? So in this case, it's one. There's just one row for headers. And now it has worked as well. And I've kept to using only the blue and the red range, the red range only one time. So that is a key thing that I like to do to make it work there. Um, you could have also chosen another function here, which is choose rows. Choose rows allows you to essentially choose the top rows, et cetera, et cetera, as need be. And that will actually do the same thing. But I actually prefer using take. It's shorter to write and easier to understand, I find. So next up, we're going to wrap around the choose calls. So choose calls will take an array, which is all of this, and then column number one, column number two, three, four, et cetera. So if I do a comma, and then I do column number one, is going to be, say, um, I can use this reference thing. So name can be number six. And then let's say short can be number eight. And then let's have time, which is three and five, like that. There we go. And now it's showing me one, six, eight, three, five, and they are linked to this one perfectly well, like that. So um, this is kind of the sequence, choose calls, vstack, and then usually I like to do take and then sort and then filter. If you do it in another sequence, it actually ends up not really working. So I'll show you those examples in a little bit. But first, let's make it a little bit more user-friendly and let's replace these numbers with the name of the columns. So what you can do is you can actually select these two columns and you can go to the formulas tab and you can go to create from selection. 
And then at the left column, keep that ticked because these are going to be named by that. Press OK. And now if I click in this cell, look at the name box, that's called clients. If I click here, it's called task list. Notice that there is this underscore because it can't have spaces. And here it's called year. Uh, these go into your name manager. So as well as some of my lambdas that I have here, these are what they are defining. So yeah, don't do this too often. Um, it's something that it's optional whether you like to use these or not. But what you can end up doing is instead of six, I can, for example, write name and then short like that. And I can just take the header here. As it turns up, time, then look for the ones that have this symbol rather than this symbol because these are defined names. And then five was activity. I can keep going. I can then do date like that. The date will not format correctly. So I'm going to use my favorite shortcut because this gives me day, month, and year with three letters for the month, which I think is the most useful way to go about it. Also, you could do the same with the sort. So if I want to sort by time, I can just replace time there. Um, not for sort order or things like that, but it does kind of work pretty well. You also might want to do it for your entire table. And instead of A1 to I13, you could give that a name if you want to. So I could just select this and then type in the name box. So main data, can't have any spaces, so main data is good. And then it becomes just an easier to understand formula. So main data there. Notice that it's still blue because it's the same one as the range that I have. And then, yeah, you could define this one as a name as well, and it becomes easier to use. And sort index, we're going to change that to time. Perfect. So now it's a, it's an easier formula to understand. It's still not perfectly easy, <laughs> I was to say, but it is easier to understand like that. So now this method kind of won't work if, coincidentally, you do have the same name as an entry in the column that's being filtered. So if here, for example, it was David, it would show this to me twice. There is another way that you can get around that, and that's with another function called the drop function. And to do that, you Drop is kind of the opposite of take. So take will take the first row from that data set. Drop can drop the first row from it. So drop of this, and then I can say comma one, and then also drop here, comma one, like that. We'll get rid of that problem. It's kind of a really, really rare use case where you would have the same entry that you're filtering as a header, but I guess it is something that you should be aware of that can happen. By the way, these ones take and drop, they can also take negative numbers, as can choose calls and choose rows. So for example, if I did choose rows of minus one, then it would count from the bottom. So um, yeah, let's say I just change these two numbers. So I could say minus one, minus three, then it would do, this is minus one, and this is minus three would be the task list. Uh, I would probably have to format that again annoyingly so to get it to work. But yeah, essentially that's how it can work. They can all take negative numbers as well and count from the other side. So what happens if you use the wrong sort order or the wrong sequence of these things? So you will end up maybe having your sort of your headers below. For example, if I was to do the sort, and I did this before and got it wrong, if I do the sort before the V stack, and I'm going to need to take these elsewhere. So these were the sorts, but I'm going to close my V stack comma, and then my sort index is going to be say three, and it's going to be, let's do ascending like that, close my brackets for sort. Then it does kind of work, but look what it does here. It kind of puts my header row down there. So these kind of things could happen to undo that to get it to work correctly again. Uh, other things that could go wrong, for example, if you do choose calls too early, let me do choose calls here before VStack. And then there we go, like that. And I don't need to get rid of that double quote marks. Then this will give you a, a value error. So VStack needs to come before it, otherwise it will not work. So this is the order you should aim to do. Start with choose calls. That's always the outermost one, then VStack. Then list out your headers, use take or choose rows, and then do your sorting and then do your filtering. If you have that potential problem where the header name could be the same as one of the entries, then you wanna use drop as well. But that is so rare that I wouldn't necessarily advise it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is certainly a technique that I find really, really useful. And then you can check out my other YouTube channel videos as well, or you can click the like button to show your appreciation for this one. If you don't see those functions, it might be because of your version. To check which version you have, click on file and then accounts. You need to see subscription product over here, otherwise you won't have this version. And next up, the other important thing is here, the version. So 2209 means the year 2022 and the ninth month being September. If you see 2208 being August 2022 or more recent, then you should have access to this. And that might not come right away. For example, if you have the semi-annual channel, then updates are posted around six months late. So you won't see it until February of 2023. That it'll change here to version 2208. But if you're on the monthly channel, then you'll see it from August 2022. And for people like me who are on the base channel and get the features in pre-release, and we've already had these for a few months now. So I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So subscribe if you want weekly videos on this kind of stuff. Thanks for watching.